Okay, we've been talking about acids and bases, and we're talking about ionization now of acids and bases. And we're going to start with the acid phosphoric acid, H3PO4. So you want to take notes on this because you want to see how these guys are going to be affected when you look at an acid that has more than one hydrogen. Has more than one hydrogen, it, it has more than one hydrogen to give. So let's watch and see how this actually works out. Make as much room as I can here. Now, this dude right here, we all know that that's an acid. And is that in red? That's red, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Good. So, anyway, this guy is our acid. And what do acids become on the other side of the equation? Conjugate base. Conjugate base. Okay. So, conjugate base is over here. And what is this guy going to look like after he has lost one of his hydrogens, Melissa? Melissa? Okay, what's this formula going to be on the other side? Charge? Yeah. H2PO4. H2PO4, does he have a charge? Negative. Okay, he can only lose one hydrogen. All right? And so the charge now is going to be, because he lost a positive charge, it's going to be a 1 minus. All right? The next dude on the line is going to be the water. What happened to the water, Patrick? And what does he look like? Okay. Anybody remember what this guy's called? Yeah. That's our conjugate acid, but what is he? What's the, na what's the name for it? Starts with an H. What kind of ion? No. And this dude is also known as the hydronium. Hydronium ion. And you're going to see in each step of the ionization of this acid, you're going to see another hydronium made. Now let's hook these guys up. The acid becomes the conjugate base. And the base becomes the conjugate acid. They're always opposite. Okay? Here we go. Let's do the next one. And let's try and get a little line here so we don't get confused with one of the next. Here we go. I'm going to, be because of time, I'm going to do this just real quickly. This guy is going to be HPO4. You notice that he has lost one hydrogen. And now what happens to the charge? Two minus. two minus. Okay. He is a two minus. Whoops. I wanted to make him in red. Oh, uh, blue, I mean. That's okay. We'll go on. And this guy was our acid. And over here, he becomes the conjugate base, which could act as either a base or an acid, depending on the reaction, because he can give or take. Okay? As can this guy. He can give or take. And let's go ahead and connect the water over here. And the water then is going to produce another hydronium ion, which is going to be red, the H3O, 1 plus. And that way we've got ourselves our conjugate acid. So this guy right here was our acid. And this was our base. The conjugate base was what happened as the H2PO4 lost a hydrogen. Okay, that's the C base. I'm going to start abbreviating these a little bit more. Instead of C-O-N-J, I'm going to have it just C. And then the last guy, of course, is our hydronium ion, who is an acid. And this is the C acid, conjugate acid. Okay, C base. C acid. All right. And what do you 
right thing. Does he have more to give? Yeah. Yes. Okay. This dude is also a hydronium ion. How many hydronium ions is H3PO4 capable of producing? One. Three. 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 Yeah. Because he ionizes in steps. Okay, we just took the first step in ionization, taking away one. The second step in ionization was right here, and that was taking away the second one. And now we start with this. You'll, you'll notice that we start our first conjugate base was this guy who became the conjugate acid over here. Then we had this guy was the conjugate base became the conjugate acid over here. And let's get this guy separated out and we'll run through this whole thing again. Now we have PO4. What's the charge? PO4. What's his charge? He was 2 on the other side. Now he is 3 minus. Okay, he's lost another proton. Poor baby. And what else is going to happen over here? Another hydronium ion. Yes, H3O. 1 plus. And so here is the guy that was our acid. Becomes the conjugate base after he loses a hydrogen. This guy was the base. Became the hydrogen or the hydronium ion at the end. Okay, so we're we're in good shape here. There's three ions. There's three total ionizations. One for each hydrogen ion. You got to keep in mind when you see stuff on the CST as well as in your homework problems. The conjugate can only be one hydrogen difference. Just one. You can't have more than one because you've got to go through the steps like we did here. Okay, This guy is our first conjugate base. This guy is our second conjugate base. And this guy is our third conjugate base. All being produced from the successive ionization. Okay, As we go from the H3PO4 to the H2PO4 to the uh, H2PO4 to the HPO4, and the HPO4 is our final ionization. Okay, so that's how it works with phosphoric acid. Now, you got to keep in mind that we can produce a equilibrium constant for acid ionization, and that will determine what, how strong or weak an acid is. The strong or weak of an acid is how well it ionizes. Would you put that in your notes? It's how well or easily it ionizes. That determines a strong from a weak acid. <clears throat> so a weak acid ionizes just a little bit, and a strong acid ionizes a bunch. In fact, hydrochloric acid ionizes 99.99%. It's just as an ionizing fool. Oh, he just loves to ionize. Okay, you put him in the water and he's he's gone. And you get hydrogen ions, which become hydronium ions almost instantly, which become, of course, that's the acid in the water. There is no hydrogen ion in the water, really. It's only hydronium ions because the hydrogen ions immediately glop on to a water molecule. The first water molecule they run into, they, they connect with them, and they become the hydronium ions. Now, the equilibrium constants can be written because it works just like any other equilibrium. Equilibria are no different when we use acids than when we use other substances. So let's go ahead and take a look here and see how this actually works. In the interest of time, I'm going to go straight through these. I would prefer to let you kind of figure it out as we go, but see if you can follow with me as we do these things. Okay, here's our acid. Here's our base. No surprise, right? Okay, the acid. How do we know? 
Which guy's going to go for the from the acid? Weak acids, which is what this guy is. Weak acids usually have the hydrogen on the far right. And that's the guy that's going to go away. If it ionizes at all, that's the one that's leaving. So we've got our acid and our base. Now on the right side, uh, you, you may not recognize this, but this is acetic acid. Add it up. Go C, uh, I'm sorry, H, C2, H3O2. Count up all the H's, the carbons, and the oxygens, and you'll find out the numbers work out the same as this one. That's acetic acid. So on the other side, acetic acid is going to be the acetate ion that you're familiar with. And what's his charge? One minus. One minus. Yes. Okay. And now over here, we're going to get what else? The conjugate acid, which comes from the water, right? Yeah. And so this is going to be a hydronium ion. Okay. Now let's hook them up. Acid to conjugate base. Base to conjugate acid. Okay, so here's our C acid and C base. C acid, C base. C C C C. Oh, C C C. Oh, yeah, C C C. Okay, anyway. <laughs> okay, here's our. Acid, this is hydrosulfuric acid. And, no, I think I've got that. Yeah, yeah, hydrosulfuric. Hydrosulfuric, hydro because it has no water in it, which is really weird, I know. But hydrosulfuric acid. And the sulfuric acid ha is the H2SO4, or I'm sorry. Yeah, sulfuric acid is H2SO4. And has the oxygen in it. Okay, there's our acid. Here's our base. And over here, we're going to get our conjugate base, which is what? Please keep talking. About it. Okay, HS with what charge? One minus. Good. We're getting it. Okay, over here, we have our. Our hydronium ion. Whoops, not green. Okay, this guy's red. H3. Huh. O. There we go. One plus. Okay, so this is our C acid. And C base. C acid, C base. And we'll hook them up. Acid over to conjugate base. Base over to conjugate acid. All right. Now, with the bases, look at how different this is. This it's not radically different, but it is quite different than what you have seen so far. Now we take water and peel off a hydrogen instead of giving you one. So here's our base. So there's our base, and now this guy is our acid. Remember, acids don't always have to come first. Okay, so there's our base, there's our acid. Now, the base is going to become the conjugate acid. How does he do that? He gets a hydrogen from water, and now we're going to see the C2H5 and H3 one plus. So on the other side, this guy, is the, the base, is going to be our conjugate acid, and he has a one plus charge. And the acid, the water, now becomes something different, just the hydroxide ion. And so we put the hydroxide ion in here, one minus, and that's our, ba our C base. And right next door to him is our C acid. And let's connect them. 
the base becomes the conjugate acid, and the acid becomes the conjugate base. And that's our first little base example. And what I'd like you to do is stop the recording right now. And I'd like you to do this equation, the last one, the C6H5 and H2 plus water. See if you can do that ionization on your own. Stop your recording and then come back after you've done it. All right, let's see how you did. Here we go. We've got our base. Following the same pattern. Okay, we got a base here because he's the guy that's going to get the hydrogen ion. And we have the acid here because he is the guy that's going to give out the hydrogen ion. And we come back over to the other side and the, the base becomes the conjugate acid. So the C6H5NH instead of 2, it's going to be 3 and he'll have a one plus charge. And then right next door to him, we're going to get our base, our base on the other side, our conjugate base, again, is going to be OH minus. And so this is our C base. And over here is our conjugate acid. And let's put them together. We've got the base becoming the acid, the conjugate acid, and the water, which is the acid, becoming the conjugate base, which is the hydroxide ion. Now let's look at these carefully. Uh, I hope you did it right. I hope you got it right. Congratulations if you did. If you didn't, think about it a little bit and see what's going on. We'll, com we'll uh, look at this one more time. Let's look at the acids up on top. These are all, these two are weak acids. And a weak acid will ionize with water, just like a strong acid will, only its, it's uh, equilibrium constant is going to be a little different. So the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to do a K acid and a K base. So hold on to your hat, and uh, we're going to be referring back to this page when we do those, so you can get some idea of what's happening. So if you wanted to maybe take a print screen of this and print that, it would be very, very helpful. All right, I'm going to take just a short break here. Now, if you haven't written down all of these equations and how they're all tied together, in other words, copied the whole screen by hand, you want to at least have a printout uh, the hand copy would be best because you'll learn a little bit as you copy. But I'm going to go to the next screen without coming back to this screen. And I'm going to do the K sub A or the equilibrium constant for the two acids that you see on the top of the screen. And I'm going to do equilibrium constants for the two bases you see on the bottom of the screen. So here we go. Now, the K sub A for the acetic acid, which is the top one on the screen here, and this guy is going to look like this. Remember that reactants are on the bottom of the equilibrium constant. And since products are on the bottom, that means that the when we write this guy, we have to have a balanced equation. And that's one thing that I didn't do in the last uh, last last uh, screen. But it just so happens that everything is balanced. Okay. So what we're going to do is 
go ahead and use the CH3 COOH, and let's go ahead and write that in. I'm going to bracket that. CH3 COOH. And this was our little acid, and this was our base, the water. And then on the top, we have the CH3. COO, 1 minus, and then we have the hydronium ion, the H3O1 plus. And you'll notice none of these has co uh, exponents because in the balanced equation there would be no coefficients which become those exponents. I think you can see that it looks like any other equilibrium constant. And the only reason we call it K sub A is because it's the acid ionization. And for acid ionization, the uh, coefficients will never be necessary on any of the reactants or products because it only goes one water at a time. And so the number of atoms on each side is not going to change. So let's go ahead and do the second one. The second one was H2S, and so H2S is a reactant, and that goes on the bottom. And the uh, H2O, water, is also on the bottom because that's the other reactant. So we have the acid with its base, and now we put the conjugates up on top. HS, 1 minus, and, that, whoops, we don't put a plus in there. Oh, shame on me. It never felt like that. Okay, these guys are all multiplied. And these brackets, if you don't remember or forgot, the, uh, the brackets mean concentration. So this is the concentration of the hydronium ion is the last one. And that's a 1 plus. And there we go. There's a K, a, K sub A for the acid hydrosulfuric acid. H2S. Now let's go down for the case of B. For the case of B, we have first of all this thing called an amine. What makes it an amine is this part of it right here. And these are common with weak acids, or weak bases, I'm sorry, this is a base. So we start again just like we did before. The reactants on the bottom, C2, H5, NH2, and of course it's ionizing with water, so we got the H2O down there as a reactant. And then on the other side, this amine becomes exactly the same, except he's going to have an extra hydrogen on the end. The C2H5 part of this is, is kind of like a backbone structure. And that's not going to change, but the amine will, the NH2 part, which becomes the NH3 as a 1 plus. And we have that concentration. And then the instead of a hydronium ion, this time we have a hydroxide ion. Because the water, instead of uh, taking on a proton, as it did in the acids, it is now giving a proton and acting as an acid. Okay, so that's our first one. Again, it looks just like any other equilibrium constant, but we call it K sub B because it's for an acid, or for a base, that is. Okay, now the next one, we're going to start on the bottom again, C6H5, NH2, and that guy's in brackets. We want the concentration of him and the concentration of water. And then we have on the top C6, H, oh my, I, that's an H5. I got that wrong on the last screen, so we got to fix that. We'll go back and look at that in just a second. C, well, why don't we do it right now? Let's go back here. Uh, C6, H5, right here. Left that 5 out. Shame on me. Oh, anyway, back here. C6H5, NH2, 
see that same NH2 business, and uh, only now it's it's an NH3, and it's a one plus. Wow, almost messed that one up, huh? And then we have the uh, hydroxide ion here, just like we did before, and with the ionizations of acids, you're always going to get the base as a hydroxide ion. Or uh, ionization of bases, you're always going to get hydroxide ion as the conjugate base. Okay, so there we go with uh, all of that stuff. I hope that's helpful for you. Now let's just review real quickly. The uh, guided practice for the case sub A we had to do on the left hand screen, I'm comparing the last two screens for you. On the left hand screen over here, okay, we've got the uh, ionization of the acids on the top of this screen, and you'll see how those look. And then from that, that led us over to the K sub A, and figuring the K sub A, just use the reactants on the bottom, right here, and the products on the top from the left hand screen. And if you look at the ionization now of the bases, it's the same kind of deal. This guy comes over here, and both of these equations become, we are going to write K sub B's for or we wrote K sub B's for already, and you can see that in these guys, notice that the conjugate base is hydroxide, and this is the conjugate of the water, and the conjugate base here again for the second one was also OH. And so when we have a, a uh, ionization of a base, that guy is taking hydrogens from water. When you have the ionization of an acid, you'll notice that the acid uh, or the base is the water, and so it becomes a conjugate acid. So water's gaining a hydrogen. In both of these, water gains the hydrogen to form the hydronium ion. And so water as an acid in, or as a base in the top screen forms hydronium ion every time, gaining a hydrogen. On the bottom half of, the, of both screens, you'll see water as an acid, and as it loses it, one of its hydrogens, it forms a hydroxide ion, and the hydroxide ion is what you see there. And now we're going to change all the colors here on the right-hand side to make them consistent with acids and bases. And well, I'm going to stop and do that and then let you take a look at it. You'll see it immediately. Well, that took a long time. Anyway, you can see here now the relationship of the acids to their conjugate bases by the red to blue comparison. Reactants on the bottom, we're talking now over here. Um, let's start at the top. Okay, you'll see that reactants are on the bottom here. And the reactant is going to become the product of the thing above it. And so the blue water became the red hydronium ion, and the red acetic acid became the blue acetate ion. You know, this guy to this guy. And then over in the bases, the, the acid, or the, uh, um, the guy that becomes the base. I think we got this backwards, so we need to fix it. So, now it's fixed, and I'm not on the double screen because I wanted to focus just on this one screen. And you'll notice in the top with the acids, we have on the bottom of each of the fractions, we're talking down here, okay, that bottom, you'll see a red and a blue. The bottom here, a red and a blue, the acid and its base, the acid and the base. And then if you go directly up, you'll see on here, you'll see the HS1 minus is the conjugate base, and the H3O1 plus is the conjugate acid. And they're the conjugate, he's the conjugate acid of the water below, 
and the HS1 minus is the conjugate acid of the hydrosulfuric acid below it. And then same kind of thing at the top. The acid is in the bottom left. The base is in the bottom right. We're talking about this equation, or this, this uh, equilibrium constant right now, this K sub A. And on the top, you'll see the base in blue above, directly above the acid, only that, that all, all the guys on the top that are acids and bases are conjugate acids and bases. Because in the original equation back here, they were on the right side of the equation. Let's go back now and see that comparison. And we've got to go one more. There we go. And now you can see very clearly, if you look at the right-hand screen, let's get this little arrow thing out of the way. If you look at the right-hand screen, you'll see an exact opposite of the bottom equilibrium constants, the K sub Bs, to the top equilibrium constants, which are the K sub As. And so you're, you're seeing some really hefty differences there overall and able to get some idea of what it is that's going on and is the difference between an acid and a base and how they ionize. That's it, folks. Hope it really helps you. Bye-bye.